All right, so welcome to Data Part 2, the sequel. It's always words usually, but um, we're going to be on page 248 today, 248. And if you remember what we said last time, the accusative is the direct object of a sentence, but also it follows certain prepositions. So when we studied the accusative last semester, two semesters ago, uh, we also studied certain prepositions that are followed by the accusative. Für, um, ohne, gegen, and durch. For example, if something is for me, it's für mich, not für ich, für mich. Oder ich rufe dich an, that's the direct object. Um, dieser, um, dieses Buch ist für dich, something is for you. Or, um, I'm not going without you, I'm not going to the party without you. Ich gehe nicht ohne dich. Of course, if it's you too, you plural, ich gehe nicht ohne euch. Okay? So, all of these are followed by the accusative. If it's needed, sometimes it's just a noun without an article, then you don't have to worry about it. So, we studied these, and today, of course, we have to study the ones that are followed by the dative. So, last time, we said the dative is the indirect object of a sentence, which is true, of course. Ich schenke meine Mutter eine neue Tasche. But, it also follows certain prepositions. So, today we're going to look at these. And, um, the one thing to remember is that prepositions cannot be translated. You cannot really say, oh, uh, nach means to. Now, not always and not you know, you can say in to say to, you go into a place, ich gehe ins Kino, you can say zu, ich gehe zur Post. Nach means to in a certain context. So we want to go over each preposition and the, uh, the examples in the book, make more examples and try to understand the, the context in which they're used. So, let's start with aus. Und hier im Buch habt ihr aus uh, Nimm den Weißwein aus dem Kühlschrank, so out of a place. Oder ich nehme mein Handy, wo ist es? Ich nehme mein Handy aus meiner Tasche, aus der Tasche. And of course, die Tasche is feminine, but it turns into aus der Tasche, because it's after a dative preposition, ja? Yeah? Ich nehme das Handy aus der Tasche. Aber... Ich uh, stecke mein Handy in die Tasche. So in is not one of those. And I didn't change die Tasche into der. Only with aus. Okay? Or it can mean that uh, the, you come from a certain place and you don't have to worry about the preposition so much. Ich komme aus Italien. Du kommst aus Amerika, aus den USA, aus Texas. Usually places, countries, and cities are not used with a preposition, uh, with an article, sorry. So, uh, you don't have to worry about the dative, yeah? Ich komme aus Italien. However, if you're from Switzerland, and then you have to use the, the article, ich komme aus der Schweiz, die Schweiz, aus der Schweiz. Uh, oder ich komme aus den Vereinigten Staaten. Die Vereinigten Staaten, plural, die, but if you remember the Risi Nisi Merman, in is dative plural. So ich komme aus den Vereinigten Staaten. Make sense? Yeah? Okay, good. So aus is out of a certain place or from as an origin, where you're originally from. Yeah? And aus of, well, that one is pretty straightforward, so that's easy. It's just except for. So uh, heute sind alle hier außer. Uh, meinem Bruder. Man, es ist meine Geburtstagsparty, ich habe eine Geburtstagsfete und alle sind da, meine ganze Familie, außer meinem Bruder. So, of course, if you use a dative preposition, everybody is here except for my brother, then you have to use a dative ending. Außer meinem Bruder, with the EM ending. Yeah? Alle sind da, außer meinem Bruder. Okay? Ich habe alle eingeladen, Außer meinem Bruder. That's different though, okay? Good, and then haben wir by. And um, the book tells us it's uh, either for, but not for, then this is for you. Remember, that was für dich, yeah? 
Diese Blumen sind für dich. Die Hausaufgabe ist für dich, für euch. It's by is in working by a specific uh, company. Ich arbeite bei TCC, bei Tarrant County College. Ja? Wo arbeitest du? Oh, ich arbeite bei Starbucks. Okay? So if you're using the name of the company, uh, where you work, you know, you work for a specific company, you can use by. But it's not the same as für. No? So by only with the name of the company, ich arbeite by TCC. But if you're working for your father, that would be für. Ich arbeite für meinen Vater. And if something is for you, die Hausaufgabe ist für euch. No? So there's a difference between für and by. That's why you have to learn these prepositions with the context. Okay, also ich arbeite hier bei TCC. Gut. And of course, by has other meanings. Uh, one that gets people confused a lot is uh, the second one here, at, meaning at the home of, at somebody's place. In English, most of the times, you have to add place to that sentence. For example, where's the party? Oh, it's at, it's, um, it's at Jeff's house. You have to use house or place. Where do you celebrate your birthday? At my grandparents. At least the apostrophe S, not just the preposition at. In German, you just use by. That means all of that, it's all included. Okay? So, wo ist die Party? Die Party ist bei Jeff oder bei meinem Bruder. Die Party ist bei meinem Bruder. Meine Geburtstagsparty ist bei meinem Bruder. Oder wo feierst du, um, wo feiert ihr uh, den 4. Juli? Ja? Wo feiert ihr den 4. Juli? What does that mean? Think about it for a moment. Wo feiert ihr den 4. Juli? Where do you celebrate the 4th of July? Today is, what day is today? Um, today is May, heute ist der, okay, 27. Mai, that's why I thought of the 4th of July. Okay, heute ist der 27. Mai und ja, yeah, die Frage ist, wo feiert ihr den 4. Juli? Now, if you're saying you celebrate at your parents, then you use this one by Wir feiern bei meinen Eltern. You don't have to use that apostrophe S. It's not by meinen Eltern. You don't have to say my parents' place or house, nothing. Just by. That means the person's place, okay? Just the date of ending. Wir feiern bei Eltern ist plural. So what's the plural ending? Recent easy, mer, men, meinen Eltern, yeah? Notice the difference between we are feiern by meinen Eltern. So we're moving on to the next one already. We are feiern by meinen Eltern, aber wir feiern mit der ganzen Familie. We are feiern by meinen Eltern means at their place. That's where we're celebrating, at my parents. Aber mit der ganzen Familie, with the whole family. That's just the people who are there, not at their house, just who you're celebrating with. Also, wir feiern bei meinen Eltern, aber mit der ganzen Familie. And there, of course, die Familie is feminine. So what's the ending for dative? Think about it. Riesen, easy, mer, er, mit der ganzen Familie. Ja? Wir feiern bei meinen Eltern, mit der ganzen Familie. So by, again, two meanings. One, to work for and then the name of the company, or to celebrate or spend time at somebody's place without having to say place, okay? Even if somebody calls you and you say, where are you? Wo bist du? Wo bist du gerade? Ich bin bei meiner Freundin. I'm at my friend's house. You don't have to say house. You don't have to do apostrophe S. Just by meiner Freundin. I'm at my friend's house. By already says that. Okay, good. So, moving on to mit. And the book, of course, says it means either with or by. With is the easy part. That's fairly straightforward again. You're going with someone. Ich gehe mit uh, meiner Tochter ins Kino. Yeah? I'm going to the movies with my daughter. Ich gehe mit meiner ER ending, no? Tochter ins Kino. Or... Um, like we said before, you're celebrating your birthday with someone, 
Ich feiere meinen Geburtstag mit meinen Freunden. All right, so that's the easy part. But when you say it means by, it's only used um, when you mean by and then a, a mean of transportation, by train, by bus. I go there by train. So not anytime you use by, okay? Basically, wie fährst du nach, um, wie fährst du nach München? Oh, ich fahre mit dem Zug. Ja, ich fahre mit dem Auto, mit dem Zug, mit dem Bus, ja? Yeah? So, mit dem, why? Because it's dative. And Auto, Bus, Zug are all either neutral or masculine, so it will always end in EM, dem. Uh, here in Texas, you don't have a lot of means of transportation, so that makes it a little easier. You'll never use this one. Because, do you really take the bus or the train here? Probably not, okay? Aber ich fahre mit dem Auto, ja? Ich fahre mit dem Auto, nicht mit dem Zug, nicht mit dem Bus, okay? Good, so that one shouldn't give you any problems. Let's look at nach, okay? And our book says nach means after. We already know that. We knew it actually in chapter one already because we studied nachmittag. What is nachmittag? Afternoon. Nach, after, mittag, noon. So we already know this word. But if you use it um, with a uh, article, then you have to remember to use the um, dative. So instead of afternoon, nachmittag, what about after lunch? Lunch is das Mittagessen. So after lunch would be nach dem Mittagessen. Or after the movie. After the movie, movie is der Film. So think about it for a second. After the movie. Nach dem Film. Der becomes dem. Nach dem Film gehen wir Pizza essen. After the movie we're gonna go eat pizza. Yeah? Nach dem Film gehen wir Pizza essen. Oder um, uh, let's try another one. After the lecture we're gonna go to the lab. Nach and lecture, if you remember, is die Vorlesung. Now we have to use a dative ending. D turns to der. Nach der Vorlesung gehen wir ins Labor. Now, do I have room here on the board? Yeah. Nach der Vorlesung gehen wir ins Labor. Be careful not to start using dative with any preposition. That's why I wanted you to remember these before we moved on. Here we have nach, which is a dative preposition. It's here on this list. And so we use a dative ending. Die Vorlesung turned into der. But in, do you see in on this list? I don't see it. I'm not blind yet. It's not on this list. In is not a dative preposition. It's not there either, but we'll learn soon why. That's why you have to do chapter 8 and 9. This is not the last chapter of the book. But anyway, it's not a dative preposition, which means we're not going to use a dative ending. Das Labor, in das Labor, stays the same. We're getting ins Labor. So you use those dative endings only after these prepositions. Don't just use them everywhere now. Not with the accusative prepositions and not with the ones that we studied before that we didn't use the dative with. And we'll learn why later on in chapter um, 8. Okay, so we have uh, nach meaning after something, time-wise, okay? Nach der Vorlesung, nach dem Mittagessen, nach dem film okay or look at the book it means two but as we said before not every time that you say two in English you say nach in German here we're going to the lab and I didn't write we're going nach das Labor nach dem Labor we don't use nach with the lab in chapter one we studied um, we're going ins Kino in die Kneipe ins Restaurant, ins Theater, ins Konzert, in die Bibliothek. It was one of the first things we studied, places you go to. And we always used in, not nach. Nach is only used with proper names of cities, countries, and states, 
proper name. So, ich fahre nach Fort Worth. Okay. Ich fliege, fliege nach, um, wohin fliege ich? Ich fliege nach Italien, okay? Jetzt im Juli fliege ich nach Italien. Um, or a state. Ich fahre nach Oklahoma, okay? So, nach only with cities, states, countries, pretty much, that's it. Okay? Not every time you say to. If you go into a place, to school, it's in or zu. Okay? So, the next one, seit, and um, I'll have to delete this part, but remember, review the accusative prepositions. Okay? Because I have to give you a couple of examples here. Seit ah, is a little tricky for two reasons. Number one, it means two things. It, it means since or for. For example, ich arbeite hier, hier, wo hier, bei TCC, remember, bei TCC, seit, oh, wie lange schon? Ich arbeite hier seit acht Jahren, okay. Gut. Also arbeite ich hier. Remember, also is a false friend. It doesn't mean also. That would be auch. This means so. Okay. Also arbeite ich hier seit. Okay. Jetzt ist 2010. Ich arbeite hier seit acht Jahren. Ich arbeite hier seit 2002. Okay. If you do a little math, 2010, eight years, no? So, seit can be used with the duration of time. Seit acht Jahren arbeite ich hier. But also with the point in time something started. Ich arbeite hier seit 2002. So, in English you would use since here, but you would use for here. I've, I've been working here for eight years. Don't make that mistake in German. It's not für. No? Um, actually, für is never used with time in German. Never used with time. If you remember the accusative preposition uh, für, we use it to give something to someone. This is for you, but not with time. Uh, even when you say, oh, I studied for this test for hours and hours. In German, we don't use für. Remember what we use for that particular sentence? Think about it. Ich habe stundenlang gelernt. So, I studied for hours and hours. It's not für Stunden, it's stundenlang. No? Okay. But this is not all. So, the first problem is you have to remember not to use für. Seit means since or for when we're talking about a time, something that started in the past and continues to the present. But also, and this is one of the few things that's easier in German than in English. <laughs> Don't count on many of these. Um, in English, you would have to say, I have been working here since blah, blah, blah. So you have to use the present perfect progressive, whatever it's called. Have been working in German. Just the present tense. I work here since for eight years or since 2002. Anything that's still true for the present, that's still going on true for the present tense, use the present tense. So, that's pretty easy. Ich arbeite hier seit 2002, seit acht Jahren. Ich wohne in Denton seit 18 Jahren. Ja? Ich wohne in Denton, in Texas, seit 18 Jahren. But, okay, I use the present tense and I use seit because I still live in Denton. Ich wohne in Denton seit 18 Jahren. If I go back to when I lived in Germany, first of all, I couldn't use the present tense because it's not still true for the present. So I would have to use the past. And second, I couldn't use seit. You have to completely change that sentence structure. It would actually be, ich habe Elf Jahre lang, there's the lang again, the other way to say for a certain period of time. Um, ich habe elf Jahre lang in Deutschland gewohnt. 
So, past tense. Ich habe gewohnt, not ich wohne. And then instead of seit elf Jahren, it's not, it's not continuing until the present, so you cannot use this. Elf Jahre lang instead of that. Ich habe elf Jahre lang in Deutschland gewohnt. Aber ich wohne seit 18 Jahren in Denton. Same thing with the job here. I still work here. So, uh, I can use this. Present tense and seit. Ich arbeite seit acht Jahren hier bei TCC. But if I talk about a past job where I worked before, uh, North Lake College, for example, then I would have to use A, past tense, and B, not the seit, but lang. Na? Ich habe zwei oder drei Jahre lang by North Lake College um, gearbeitet, okay? So I want you to really think about these differences with uh, this preposition here, okay? Seid. Good. And yeah, again, moving on to the next one, von. Und, well, what does the book say? From, receiving something from a person, of or about. Okay, um, the most important ones are the first two, actually, that we're going to use uh, more than the third, probably. From, it's, I think we used it before in that sense, von, for example, uh, von wem, von wem hast du diese Tasche? Okay, ich habe diese Tasche von meinem Mann bekommen. Ja, mein Mann hat mir die Tasche geschenkt, ich habe sie von meinem Mann bekommen. Or if you receive a letter, an email from someone, uh, wer hat dir geschrieben? Oh, meine Mutti hat mir eine E-Mail geschrieben. She wrote me an email. Meine Mutti hat mir, so again, dated, but for the other reason, because I'm the indirect object. Sie hat mir eine E-Mail geschrieben. Ich habe eine E-Mail von meiner Mutter bekommen. Na? So you have two ways to say the same thing, both involving the dative, but for different reasons. Number one, meine Mutti hat mir eine E-Mail geschrieben, using the dative because I'm the indirect object. Oder, in other words, na, ich habe eine E-Mail von meiner Mutti bekommen. Now it's from my mother and my mother becomes dative just because it's after a dative preposition. Ich habe eine E-Mail von meiner Mutti bekommen. Oder ich habe ein Paket von meiner Familie bekommen. Zum Geburtstag, ja? Ich habe zum Geburtstag ein Paket, a package, ne? Von meiner Familie bekommen. Okay, so that first meaning is clear, I think. But um, the second one is the one that we really need to pay attention to. So, once again, let's erase the board and put it down here. You know, when you indicate possession in English, you always use the apostrophe as ending. So, my father's car, my mother's car, my friend's house, my teacher's desk, any possession will have the apostrophe as uh, ending to indicate that something belongs to someone. German does not work like that at all. It's actually a little more like Italian or Spanish for that matter where you say something like the car of my father, not my father's car, the desk of my teacher. You do the S ending only with proper names. So, if you're saying your classmate's name, your classmate is Katie, okay, Katie's Buch is da, wo ist Katie? Hier ist der Buch, Katie's Buch ist da. You can do that, but only with proper names. However, if you use a noun, not a proper name, as in my father's car, then you have to turn it around into the car of my father. Das Auto von, and there it is, second meaning of von, of in this sense, okay? Das Auto von, and now we need the dative ending, von meinem Vater ist grau. Okay, so von and then the dative ending, von meinem Vater. So remember when you do possessive, um, not the adjective of course, but uh, nouns, we have to use, we, we have to turn it around and use von, yeah? 
So another example could be, yeah, the, my friend's house is very big or whatever. Um, not my friend's house in German, the house of my friend. That's a hou this house von, and now if it's a uh, male friend, this house von meinem Freund is sehr groß, yeah. If it's a female friend, of course, this, ha uh, this house von meiner Freundin is sehr groß und wunderschön. So make sure you think about that, uh, and von means of only in that sense, okay? Good. The third meaning of fun is not uh, very common. If you tell about a person, they had fun, ihrer Familie erzählt. Not too common, so I would focus on the first two for now at least. The last, last preposition, zu. Well, last dative preposition. Zu, we already had a couple of examples actually with zu. It can mean to, again, but what is the difference between in, not, and zu? All right, so we said in, mostly if you're going to a place such as school or the library or the movie theater or the bar, no? Ich gehe in die Bibliothek, in die Kneipe, in die Uni, ins Restaurant, ja? Nach, we said, proper names of cities and, and countries and states, yeah? Ich fliege nach Italien, ich fahre nach Austin, okay? So when do we use zu? When you go into a person's place. And again, it works a little bit like by. You don't have to say place or house. Zu is enough, yeah? So you're going to your grandparents. Ich fahre zu meinen Großeltern. Ich gehe zu meinen Großeltern. You are at your grandparents' house. Ich bin bei meinen Großeltern. Yeah? You go into your best friend's house. Ich fahre zu meinem besten Freund. Or if it's a female friend, ich fahre zu meiner besten Freundin. You're at that person's house. Ich bin. Now I'm there. Ich bin bei meinem besten Freund. Okay? Good. And of course, if you just have a name, it's easier then. Ich fahre to, um, I always have problems with names. What's the name? Natalie, okay? Ich fahre zu Natalie. Or ich bin bei Natalie, okay? Good, then you don't have to think about the dative endings. So, um, that's the first example here in the book. Wir kommen alle sehr gern zu meiner Schwester. Wir gehen alle sehr gern zu meiner Schwester. We're going to my sisters. And see, in German, you'll need to do sisters with the apostrophe yes. first of all we don't do that remember what we said and second zu and by both already mean the person's place okay good um, and for in the sense of for a, sp a specific occasion so again so you can translate prepositions for we already said you can use für to say for no die Hausaufgaben sind für euch you can say uh, lang, I study four hours, ich habe stundenlang gelernt. You can say uh, seit, ich arbeite hier seit acht Jahren, I've been working here for eight years. There's three ways already to say four. And here's a fourth one, so you can't translate, you can't just stick in your head, oh, four equals für. It doesn't work that way with prepositions. So you really have to remember these in context. It means for, but when, in what case. Just try to remember one sentence for each to um, make it easier. So it means for a special occasion, as in for my birthday. I got, you know, a book for my birthday, or um, I got wonderful presents for uh, my anniversary, for a special occasion, okay? Zum, the, the, the song, actually, happy birthday, in German is zum Geburtstag, viel Glück. Basically, much luck for your birthday. Na? Zum Geburtstag. Es zu dem Geburtstag contracted zum Geburtstag. I'm not going to sing it because I'm an awful singer. But you can go on YouTube and check it out. Zum Geburtstag. Viel Glück. Okay? That's, there's the M zum because it's dative. Okay? Was habt ihr zum Geburtstag bekommen? Was habt ihr zum Geburtstag bekommen? Ich habe... Letztes Jahr habe ich zum Geburtstag 
ähm, ein Fotoalbum bekommen mit Fotos von meinen Freunden. Ja? Das war letztes Jahr. Ich habe ein Fotoalbum bekommen zum Geburtstag. Ja? So, again, the zum Geburtstag, the M ending there is a contraction of zu dem. Ja? Okay, so another meaning of zu, we say it can mean to a person's place, for a special occasion, or with as in something that goes with something else. What are you drinking with your steak? Oh, Coke, of course, or Dr. Pepper, because it goes so well with steak. Was, was trinkst du mit deinem um, Steak? Oh, dazu trinke ich eine Cola, ja? But that's probably, again, the least common of the three. So focus on the first two meanings, all right? The one that says, you know, when you use it to mean two and when you use it to mean uh, for a special occasion. All right, so we went through all of them. And, of course, I'll post some homework for you to practice. There will be a quiz next time we meet, the usual. But we'll keep exercise 32 for when we meet in class. And uh, the contractions, go ahead and take a look at them. When can you contract? You cannot always contract uh, the preposition and the article, only in some cases. And you can take a look at page 250, Seite 250. By dem, by, for dem, for, uh, von dem, from, zu dem, zum, like we just said, zu der, zur. The ones we studied before, we studied contractions before, we studied ins. What is ins? In das. Okay? So here's a few more. Und ja, uh, yeah. zum nächsten Mal habt ihr Hausaufgaben. Again, check online, you'll have your homework there. Uh, there'll be a quiz on what we covered today. Study this, review the dative from last time, the dative endings and so on. But uh, we'll keep the exercises for when we meet again. Tschüss!